just a little bit. Oh, I got a new friend for you. Hi. Okay, I got it. You good? I'm on top of things today without knowing I'm on top of things. You always have such a good time. Where's my Oh, yeah. Lots of practice. If you want, you can return them. <laughs> you know, you can use them for putting Christmas lights up. Mm -hmm. uh, cook, well, not these, the big ones. They cook for the week. I learned that by mistake <laughs> years ago. When she ran out of uh, clips. I didn't have any more clips, and I was like, oh, my fault. But I do have a ton of these from the Christmas show. To the roof. I don't have, I didn't have gutters on. My daughter they would was on the I don't have it. Yeah. Unless you know. <coughs> she has a lot of issues. Round up. I'm not going to mount it. It's like a train. It's like four or five. Hmm. Even the Germans. No. Security right? Yeah, we should be okay. <coughs> Kim? <coughs> what? We on? <laughs> you got the recorder? Okay. Just checking. <laughs> okay. Done. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Board of Adjustment meeting for today is April 27. Let's begin with a roll call, please. Chairman Elliott? Here. Chris Robowski? Here. Mr. Burris? Here. Mr. Eisner? Here. Ms. Sanner? Here. Thank you. I'd like to welcome our alternate, Laura Whitney, who's here. Uh, we'll talk to you at the end of the meeting if we can for a second. So you can introduce yourself, please. Uh, the next item is uh, our quasi-judicial announcement, Madam Attorney. This is a quasi-judicial proceeding where the Board of Adjustment acts in a quasi-judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At a quasi-judicial hearing, it is not the Board's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the Board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of facts to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, substantial and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the board is required by law to find against the applicant. Is there anyone here wishing to speak this evening who will be testifying? Applicants? <laughs> Why don't we just go ahead and stand and we'll get sworn in anyways. <laughs> if you guys could stand and just raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give is the, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Thank you. Okay, the next item then is number three, a six-month extension for a variance to reduce the side and rear set yards, uh, re side and rear yard setbacks, 101 Reed Street, and the applicant is here. Uh, first, let's any any ex parte communication on this one from the board. Seeing and hearing none. Okay. Next item then would be the staff presentation. Heather. Okay. Essentially, what um, came in is the applicant has made their formal request. Um, it did not make it to your previous um, agenda simply because we had to do the advertising um, necessary to meet, meet that, and the request came in after the advertising had gone out for the previous meeting. That being um, said, they did make the 30-day window. We're talking semantics, and you know they got the, their advertising, everything in there. So at this point, they're asking for a six-month extension Per your um, ordinance, it's required to come back before this board in order to provide um, that extension. Staff has no concerns as far as this. Nothing has changed. The applicant basically wants to just move forward. They had some um, issues with some other pieces, some other issues going on at the house that they had to address first. So they're just asking for some additional time to get their permits in order and pull their permit. 
Um, with that, staff can answer any questions um, if the board has any. Does the board have any questions, comments of staff? No. no. Okay, the applicant, would you like to make a statement? You don't have to if you don't want to. Um, if you do, please come to the podium, state your name and address, please. Hi, my name is Shannon Wright. Um, we live at 101 Reed Street, and that's all we were requesting was an extension on the variance, um, just for financial reasons, because we had to replace the roof on the house, and it cost as much as building a new building, apparently. <laughs> so that's all it was, just requesting a variance, the extension. Thank you. Any questions, comments? Okay. There's nobody from the public here, so I imagine there's no objection. Any written objections or phone calls to the? City? No, there's been no there's been no um, comment of any kind on this variance request. Okay. Are we ready for a motion? Motion to approve. Second. A okay, motion by. Mr. Herbosky, second by Ms. Sanner. Any discussion on the motion? I do have one question for the attorney. Sure. Number six, in determining whether to grant a variance, the board shall not consider any evidence, A, that is based upon conditions including financial and so on. And does, your question? Does that apply in this case? We are not considering the variance application. You're considering an extension. So those terms don't necessarily apply to the consideration for the extension. Okay. So what conditions apply to the extension? Whether or not in your discretion you believe that there should be an extension, whether or not that that's a, a good faith reason for the extension. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? No. So we're ready for a vote then? Could we Ms. Sanner? Yes. Call, please? Mr. Eisner? Yes. Mr. Burris? Yes. Mr. Hrabowski? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Okay, it's the opinion of the chair. A motion's been passed, and it's a two-year extension. Is that correct? No, and it's a six-month six month extension. Six months. Sorry, six months. Six months to get a permit, correct? Right. Correct. Okay. okay, moving on then. Uh, application uh, item number four uh, for a variance to increase the maximum height of a fence. The address is 1401 Meyer Lane. This is on Keystone Road, east of town. And uh, the applicant is in the audience. Any ex parte communications on this item from any of the board members? Just for the record, again, I did go to, to the site to visit. Whether it's an ex parte communication or not, I don't know, but I just want to disclose that. I didn't talk to anybody when I was there. So then, Ms. Erwiller, if you would please. Yes, again, the application is for 1401 Myers Lane. The variance is to increase the maximum height of a fence from four to six feet in the front yard. Um, essentially, the code section um, is 36.03 that we're deciding tonight. Item B, in all residential districts, no fences, walls, or hedges shall exceed four feet in height when located within the required front yard setback. Um, the subject property is located at the, My uh, the corner, as stated, um, Myers Lane and Keystone Road. There was a previous variance granted in March 26, 2014, to increase the maximum height of uh, the fence from six to eight feet on the side and rear yards and four to six feet on the west side of the property in the front adjacent to the intersection of Meyer Lane and Keystone Road. The justification for that previous variance request was a significant change in the elevation between the subject property and Keystone Road sidewalk. When Keystone Road was widened from two lanes to four lanes, the subject property was impacted due to the top topography in the area. The applicant did make a previous request to increase the fence height in the front yard from four to six feet. The Board of Adjustment heard that request in January and was finally decided in February. Um, the Board of Adjustment decided to deny that variance. At that time, the applicant then asked for um, a rehearing request, which was granted by this board on uh, March 23rd, 2016. The applicant has subsequently um, provided some additional material under this re request, including a new letter of hardship, additional pictures, LDC section 2000, that should be 2015, it should be 215.02, not 2015. 
notice of decisions for application um, 15116, a petition for the surrounding neighbor property owners, a story from a Tarrant Bay Times about adjacent about an adjacent the adjacent home, and materials from the previously approved variance application 1412. The applicant is allowing is is asking to allow for additional fencing at six feet in height in the front yard along the the front perimeter of the house the applicant stated hardships are topographical changes in elevation between the front yard and the house the proximity of keystone road and the change in elevation that occurred as a result of the widening of keystone roads and unsafe conditions due to an abandoned house across uh myers lane the applicant has provided a petition signed by neighboring properties within the subdivision that they agree to increase to the increase in the fence height. It should be mentioned that approval of adjacent property owners is not a requirement of the variance approval. All right, so based on the right review criteria, the home is slightly elevated above Myers Lane. The topographical conditions that prompted the previous variance still do have, exist. However, the applicant has installed a fence on the affected areas of the property under the previous variance. The fence is installed as a wrought iron fence with masonry columns. The elevational change between the house and the street is a physical condition of the land. However, staff does not agree that the change in elevation warrants an increase in the height of the fence in the front yard. The conditions are not self-created. The house was built in 2014, and due to the location of the drainage <laughs> system for the subdivision, the house was built higher to allow for a positive flow of stormwater. The request is not a minimal request. The applicant is, has not provided any evidence to show why a six foot fence should be allowed in the front yard. The land development code does allow for a maximum four foot fence in the front yard. Denying this request would not deny the applicant reasonable use of the property. The applicant is currently living in the structure. Granting the variance will confer a special privilege. None of the homeowners in the area that have fences have required variances for the heights of the fences. Staff agrees. There is an elevational difference between the street and the house. However, staff does not agree that the elevational, elevational difference justifies an increase in the height of the fence. The request is, will not negatively impact the property values in the area, and the request is consistent with the neighborhood character would not create a nuisance. This application was published in Tampa Bay Times when was, um, proper, notice was sent to properties within 200 feet of the subject property, and, cons and the property has been posted now twice. Um, staff has received no, po no comment as of the date of this report, and staff is recommending denial of the requested variance to increase the maximum height of the fence from four to six feet in the front yard. The request does not meet the review criteria established in section 215.02B and 215.0.5 of the LDC. And I can answer any questions that you may have. Is there any, I have a question. First, is there any restriction for the owner to bring the elevation of their front yard from the slope that it has from the base of the, ha of the base of the wall or the at the start of the foundation to the proposed fence they want to do. Apparently there's, there's a slope to it. That's why they want to bring it up. Is the mic the microphone? Okay. So they, they have the right to elevate their property and then the fence will stay, will start to be on a higher level. That is correct. They could. Mayor, why Mayor Lane has anything to do with it, or why Keystone Road has anything to do with it, this is only the road itself, as it shows here. Mm -hmm. But her property can come even with the foundation of the house, mm -hmm. and she can make the fence four feet. That will take care of it. That is correct. She could change the elevation of um, of the house or the area of her front yard, front yard, provided she can establish a new water flow pattern because she will have to meet the drainage requirements because any elevational change there will affect the way the drainage does flow as a result of that was the first lot and when the drainage system was put in it was put in with a drain there in the front yard so she would just have to make sure when and any elevational changes that she ha that she's doing are consistent with good storm water practices but yes yeah, she could come in and get a grade and fill permit for um adjusting the elevation in the front yard okay if she has a two feet difference at this point whatever the future elevation will be it will get close within a foot that's correct if she chose to do that. Okay, that's the question that I had. So that's a solution there. Can I follow up on that? So 
the applicant can uh, doesn't need to fill the entire yard just the strip of land where the wall would go is that a fair statement or no the applicant can choose to grade and fill the yard how they choose provided that they can meet the requirements of the permit application um, and in this case their biggest concern would be the positive drainage flow of that lot over time so if it was only the area of the fence she would have to include that as part of her application for the ver for the excuse me for the, the permit and yes, she could do that, but that's something that she'd have to work with an engineer to determine those elevations and what's appropriate there for any type of swaling or things that need to be done to make that um, drainage a positive drainage situation. Any further questions from the board? Anyone? I think you have a question. Okay. We'll go with the board first. You're next. Okay. <clears throat> You have any questions? Oh, I have questions for her. Okay. Next, we'll hear from the applicant then, if you please come forward and state your case, if you would. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, I am uh, Anastasia Knecht, and I am an owner of this house. Um, uh, I'm very sorry to bother you with this uh, again, uh, but uh, thank you for coming and uh, considering all this issue. Uh, first of all, uh, before even uh, uh, starting uh, filing all these variances, I talked to the um, uh, landscaping company who did fill my front yard already. It was li like much um, uh, lower slope. So my uh, intention was uh, to make it uh, higher and even and uh, they said no, they cannot do it because of the topographical conditions. Um, first of all, I need to provide the uh, city drainage system, first of all, so I cannot block this uh, city drainage uh, place. Uh, second, um, um, uh, if you look at the picture on the left side of the house, you see the driveway there, which uh, was basically placed uh, on the same topographical level as the Keystone Road. And uh, uh, if you look on the right side of the house, um, uh, my front yard was um, uh, basically filled uh, uh, to the level of the second house. So if you look from the uh, left to right, it's not uh, even. So uh, basically, uh, we considered many solutions uh, before I even come here to ask you for the variance. And um, uh, the um, uh, landscaping company, they filled the yard uh, the best they can, but they cannot uh, elevate uh, this slope or make it more even than it, it already is done. Why is that? Uh, because, uh, well, my, uh, I, uh, I considered first uh, to build, like, uh, uh, to make the front yard completely, like, even, and then uh, to do the uh, re retention wall. And uh, they, they cannot build it because uh, on the left side of the front yard, uh, uh, the left side is um, uh, lower than the uh, right side. See, um, uh, the left side uh, of the front yard uh, with the uh, car driveway, it's two car driveway, uh, it was um, uh, placed on the same topographical level as the Keystone Road, and then it goes higher toward the uh, neighboring house like this. Uh, so, uh, uh, and also uh, the slope coming from the house down to the drainage system, uh, it's very uh, unique topographical uh, slope and uh, um, I want you to believe me that we considered all other solutions before I even come here to you. And it's, it's just physically, well, I ask my landscaping company uh, to fill the front yard to the best they can to elevate this uh, height of, of the fence. Uh, uh, and basically uh, what they did in the pictures that I supplied, it's already after uh, all possible attempts were made. Any 
Any further questions? Mr. Eisner? In your picture here, it mm -hmm. says proposed six foot height. Mm -hmm. Is that these two are proposing? The well, heights? basically, the question was uh, uh, this question came from Heather. She, she asked me uh, uh, to, like, um, uh, how the six feet fence uh, will be better uh, than the four feet fence. fence. What I did, uh, I ordered the four feet fence, which you see on one picture. And then, uh, just to give you uh, visual evidence, I basically by myself put uh, on the two front uh, columns, I put uh, additional stones, I didn't glue it, nothing, I, I just put them in uh, to the height of six. So this case, you can compare how the six feet actually differs from the four feet. That's basically, uh, that's all I can do. And uh, uh, now it's up to you if you can compare the pictures of the four feet right now. And uh, one picture was provided uh, with the six feet of the two front columns. And you can see how high they are. And basically, uh, when I put two additional uh, feet higher, uh, at least um, the top of, this, of those column, uh, columns, uh, at least, uh, uh, were on the same height as the house windows, at least the, uh, the um, uh, actually bottom uh, of the house windows, at least when you put six feet uh, on this particular slope, uh, the uh, top of the six feet fence at least like reaches uh, on the same topographical height as the bottom of the house windows. And how high is the bottom of the windows? I measure it four feet. Okay. Can I ask you this? And basically, when you go uh, with the cord, which allows four, four feet front yard uh, f uh, fence, uh, if you uh, basically put my, uh, if you eliminate my front yard slope completely, uh, if uh, it would be like uh, even surface, six feet uh, completely like reaches the bottom of the house windows, which is four feet. So uh, if you consider the slope, six feet fence is uh, basically the same as four feet fence on the even surface. I think it's just the opposite. Slope it would make the fence higher, not smaller. That's right. I, uh, uh, of course, yes. Uh, that's what I'm asking for is uh, to add uh, those two feet uh, to the columns. Uh, so uh, visually, it will be presented as a uh, four feet fence on the even surface. But if you're driving by in a car, now you're looking at a 10 foot fence. Or because you're on a slope, or an eight foot fence, whatever it is, because you're in the slope. Do you follow that? Uh, yes, yes, basically uh, uh, I had my neighbor driving uh, past my, my, my columns and um, I put it uh, in the letter of hardship too and that's what he said. Uh, since uh, the fence uh, is not located by the uh, Meyer Lane, it's basically 15 feet farther from the driving road. Uh, he said uh, if it would be right uh, in front of the car, like uh, um, uh, right by the Meyer lane, uh, it would uh, like uh, not very uh, aesthetically pleasant to them, but since uh, I put the fence 15 feet farther from the, uh, my, uh, from the uh, main road, so he said it's, it's not really um, uh, so it's too far uh, from the street. So he said it's completely fine with them. And um, uh, let me just read it to you. It's here in my uh, letter of hardship. So some of the residents from the house 14, 49 said that due to the fact that the front yard fence is 
located on the steep front yard slope well below the main house construction base and 15 feet from the property front line, the two feet increase in its height will not be visually perceived uh, by the drivers and pedestrians along Meyer Lane. So, and also the petition from the neighbors, uh, um, uh, I had this question from uh, a board member before. So how the uh, neighborhood considers uh, all this project? So I went to uh, each house, to each neighbor on my street, and uh, uh, I asked them so what they think, and uh, uh, they signed the petition. Uh, every house on my street signed the petition that uh, uh, six feet feet uh, will be much better than four feet and will basically bring, um, uh, uh, will basically uh, increase the aesthetics and of the neighborhood and uh, they completely don't mind and basically this they all support my idea have you uh, seen anybody in the deserted house across the street since the two last uh, two? recently not recently. however uh, today uh, I contacted two of my uh, neighbors, uh, one is across the street and uh, to the house on the, um, uh, on the right, and they were willing to come to this meeting. I really don't know why uh, they didn't show up, but uh, they said they are going to come and present you with the evidence of uh, unsafety. Unfortunately, people didn't come, but... Have they called the police when they see people in the house? And the house across the street, neighbor who was going to come here and tell you uh, all uh, what he saw, she was calling the police. And uh, I specifically asked her to come and to present this evidence to you, and she said she will. However, I, I don't know for what reason. She's, she's really a very sick woman. Maybe something happened. She, she didn't show up. Are there any other children on your block? Children? The kids on your block. Well, I have a five-year-old child, and um, uh, on the house on the right, uh, they have uh, three small children whom they basically keep on the backyard, and they have cameras, and uh, they were, are going to come here to present the evidence with their cameras. Do they have a fence? Well, I talked to their uh, owner, uh, uh, what he thinks about the unsafety of the area. And he said, yes, I have three small children and I am very, very concerned about this. So I, I asked him, like, what are you going to do with this? What he said, I will build the same fence. Can I ask a question? Okay. I am. Yes, sir. Um, the uh, four-foot pillars that are in your front yard currently, are those permanently installed? Those are permanently installed. Did you obtain a permit for those? I applied. I am still waiting for. So you installed something basically without the permit? Oh, well, I just Received put the... They were installed before you got approval for a permit? Uh, no, I applied for the permit uh, before I uh, installed this, and uh, it has been a month they haven't called me. And uh, I uh, uh, talked to the department, uh, uh, since it's uh, uh, four feet, it's within the code, uh, and I told them that um, I will have this meeting to increase the height, so it's like not... Uh, um, uh, the final uh, the final permit so I'm not sure if I will be allowed or not and uh, she said okay just let hold on it and uh, if you will have the uh, permit to increase it then uh, I will submit additional application uh, some kind of fee uh, to the variance of the permit okay thank you mm -hmm. could I pursue that Ms. Heather, the legal term for these are purpose chairs, these little pilings. 
are these permitted? Do these, do these need to be permitted? These, uh... The fence needs to be permitted. Um, their structure, they look at those, anything that is, uh, has structural supports and that type of thing. If blocks are stacked, even if they're stacked in a way where they appear to be, as long as they are not cemented together, they can be stacked that way. It'd be no different than if we stacked it in our driveway. However, if they've been cemented and secured, that's a different story. That requires the permit. Thank you. Mr. Burris. Yes, I have a question. On the picture you supplied in the past, as far as the Eastern uh, Road being elevated, mm -hmm. is the elevation of Mayor Lane the same elevation as Eastern Road? Uh, well, I uh, I believe the, uh, I supplied this picture. I took um, uh, my lane uh, basically goes on a slope like this uh, from the um, uh, lake side. It just goes down like this. And my house is uh, the lowest one uh, on on the my lane. I, I so it goes like this toward the Keystone Road. And what you see from my house, it goes up. So uh, that's why the uh, dra uh, drainage system was placed right in front of my house because it's like uh, the lowest uh, uh, area o on the Meyer Lane. So Meyer Lane is basically where it meets Keystone Road. I would say. Elevation. I would say the Keystone Road even a little bit higher uh, than. Okay the fence that you have parallel to Keystone Road, is that a six foot fence? Uh, this particular stone wall, uh, what was built even before my house was built, is six feet. Okay, is that what you're trying to do to connect these six feet with the front of the house to look uniform? Uh, basically what uh, I have the uh, permit uh, from 2014, uh, which was uh, uh, the same thing, uh, elevation of the front yard fence from four feet to six feet. And uh, I have this permission. Uh, so basically this was um, um, a permission uh, to uh, elevate uh, the height of the front yard fence on, uh, on the left side. So uh, it, it would connect uh, the side of my house to this particular stone wall, and uh, it would be on the same uh, height of six feet. Okay. And I still do have it, it's six feet all. So basically what I am asking is um, just to move the six feet fence uh, all over the front yard, not just on the left side. I do have the permit for the left side, uh, because um, uh, uh, the height of this particular uh, stone wall is six feet. <coughs> because of the car being there, is the elevation on that side of the house, is it flat or it has a slope? Uh, from, from the house, uh, it's the same slope like this. To this wall parallel to the Keystone Road. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. The fence that you have parallel to the Keys to Keystone Road, okay, that looks like it's the north side of the house, am I correct? Or the uh, north side of the house? Let's say the parallel side of the house to Keystone Road. It has between the fence and the house wall, there's a space there, 10 mm -hmm. feet, 8 feet, whatever it is. Yeah. Is that flat or it has a slope? No, it's not flat. Uh, uh, is basically a driveway, uh, well, uh, just by the um, uh, stone concrete wall, it's a driveway uh, basically going to the um, uh, end uh, of the property, and I do have this uh, uh, sewage station there, so it's a re regular driveway, which is uh, very, very close to the um, a uh, concrete stone wall, it's kind of like flat. And then after this, it's a slope to the house, like that. The same way, that's a, the same, same way as the way. front. Yeah, same way as the front. Okay. Thank you. So basically people who are work, or walking on the Keystone Road can see everything on my property. My turn. Okay. Uh, uh, 
First of all, I appreciate your tenacity. You're really trying hard to get this. This is your fourth month here. So right. my compliments you. to you for that. Um, let's focus on the alleged problem that you perceive. And if you don't understand my question, please let me know. Mm -hmm. uh, you said before the reason for this wall is because you feared for people living in that vacant home across the street. Is that the reason? Oh, this is, um, um, is basically, yes, it's one uh, of the reasons, too. We kind of get used to this uh, structure, which is basically... Just answer my question. That's the reason, is because you perceive there's people staying in the house. Is that, that's all I want to know, yes or no? Uh, there, of course, yes. Everyone perceives this, yes. That's the reason? Yes. Okay. And also, if uh, I would have at least, like, uh, even surface and... Uh, the piles and the fence will at least like reach the bottom of my windows at least. Uh, well, it's uh, it's really just I got the answer sense. to my question. Thank you. So that's the focus. The reason for this wall is because it's to keep people from coming onto your property. Is that correct? Uh, basically, any fence will will keep the people uh, of the property. Yes, but uh, uh, I want to increase it to six because uh, just to bring it at least to the bottom of the window because the slope is so steep, and uh, with the four feet you don't even see this uh, this fence. Thank you. When I visited the property, I took a look at this vacant house. I didn't yeah. see any evidence of anybody staying there. And then normally there would be some evidence, wrappers, trash, something. All I saw was a lot of concrete rubble when I went there. Do you have any pictures of anybody staying there? Photographs, police reports, evidence from the police, anything like that? Uh, first of all, I. I focused on this uh, during our first meeting, and uh, to my understanding, the board really doesn't want to consider the unsafety uh, of the neighborhood. Uh, and uh, but uh, unsafety is still there. And um, uh, I did talk to my neighbors, and they they were promised to come. I really don't know my what question, has happened. You have no evidence come. of anybody staying there. That's the reason why you want this wall, correct? And there's, I, I didn't see any evidence of it. Well, I personally did not collect any evidence because I do not go outside when it's dark on my front yard. And no one in our street, uh, except for my um, neighbors uh, on the right uh, that have cameras, and they said that they have evidence on their cameras, and they were going to come here, but unfortunately... But you don't have it here. There's no evidence of anybody staying there that I've seen. <coughs> and I've asked the city to find out, to go and take a look. Heather, have you, any, any report on that? The police went, the code enforcement went out and looked at the house to determine if there was any evidence of um, anybody living there or presence of vandalism or any of that type of thing. Um, they reported back to me that they found no evidence of that. That aside, the basis for a variance <coughs> is the physical hardship of the property, not a perceived unsafety issue. If there's a safety issue in the neighborhood, that's an enforcement thing, and that's not something that this board's charged with. So bringing up that evidence here doesn't, doesn't provide a justification that in our code we can actually evaluate. I understand that. Yeah, and that's what I was told, that it's not really a reason, even if it's not safe, it's not a reason for the variance, so. There's a petition. There is a petition that's brought up to us about the safety or the unsafe environment. I'm just curious why, if that's not an issue for the board, why this was brought up to us as a petition about the safety or an non-safe area that you live in? No, I, I just want you to consider you know, what does it mean to live uh, uh, in front of this house, and especially having small children nearby. 
Uh, it's up to you if you want to consider it or not, but. Right, can I get back to um, the wall that you want to put up? You have a driveway into your backyard, is that correct? On the west side, there's a driveway. Uh, yes, it was put by the city, actually. And are you planning to put the wall across the driveway as well, if, if that's your concern? Uh, no, I, um, uh, basically I have this permission to put this uh, uh, fence uh, uh, across this driveway, uh, basically connect this stone wall, uh, con uh, concrete stone wall uh, along uh, Keystone Road, but uh, uh, across this particular driveway and connect it to the left side of my house, uh, to the left side of the house. I do have this permit, but uh, basically, I decided not to do this, and uh, the driveway is going to be open uh, completely, and uh, I just want uh, to move this particular fence to protect uh, the front door and the front of the house. Well, my question then, how is that going to happen if the driveway is going to remain open and not, not have a wall? Ah, uh, yes. I do have the, uh, another permit that I have uh, uh, applied two years ago. Uh, for the uh, elevation of the fence on the side of my house to the eight feet. And if you have seen the property, you probably notice it. So all my, uh, all my property uh, along this particular driveway is completely closed. So it's uh, no open doors, nothing there. It's side of the house and then eight feet fence uh, with the gate, which is always closed and locked from, uh, so from I, I don't what see I the understand reason. from what I understand that the driveway is going to remain open open yes uh, basically uh, I need to let the city people come in and to work on the sewage station too oh. and uh, I don't see the reason why should I close this particular driveway because um, uh, this is nail doors, nail open areas on the side of the house, and then I have eight feet uh, fence with a gate which is completely closed. Well, from what I understand, your only allegation of a hardship, which we can't even consider as a hardship, is the safety factor. So that's their problem but we haven't seen any evidence of a problem, and your solution to that problem won't work because half of the, or the driveway is gonna remain open. If there's people gonna to wanna to come into the curtilage of your yard, they're gonna just walk around the wall and go through the driveway, is that right? No, unfortunately it's not right. It's probably a, a completely not correct understanding of what I'm trying to present. Um, uh, regarding the safety, I want to say that if anyone is willing to walk on this driveway, it's not a problem because on the side of the house, I do not have any doors. I have two small, tiny windows which are very, very high. So, and then uh, when you pass the side of the house, uh, this is a, a very, very, um, uh, like huge eight feet uh, tall uh, fence uh, with a gate which is completely closed. So uh, there is no way uh, anyone could reach the property from this driveway. Uh, it's definitely like no way. I don't see any possible way uh, anyone can just walk uh, on this particular driveway and reach backyard or get uh, in, in, into the house. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you. Andrea. And also the um, uh, main reason why I'm asking to increase the height is because um, uh, the slope difference is two feet. And uh, uh, if you let me put this additional two feet, it will basically reach the bottom of the window, which at four feet. I got that, thank you. Right, on that point, you understand from what I'm hearing tonight is that it is possible for you to elevate where these prefixtures are at the, at the front of your yard, the curtilage. Mm -hmm. You could elevate that somehow two feet with fill. 
and then put a four foot wall above that well, with, with, with the appropriate drainage so that it won't flood anybody else. Is that correct, Heather? Yeah. You, you understand that, ma'am? I understand this, and I also want you to consider that I am not a professional engineer or landscaper, and I did talk to the people asking them to do this, and they said it's not possible because <coughs> uh, of the topography of the area. So this is my neighbor, and he is willing to give the uh, maybe additional evidence of the unsafety of, of this particular thing. So she, she lives right uh, by this particular house if you are willing to hear this. Okay, we are at the, give us a minute, okay? All right, any further comments from my thoughts, questions? Well, I do have some for Heather. In this newspaper article dated uh, September 2015, it says the complaint states that the house will be demolished. It's unclear when that will happen. Tarpon Springs Building Development Director Anthony Mastraccio said the city attorney is looking into what can be done. This could take a few months. Any progress, any notice? Um, well, it's not, again, I'm going to just reiterate what I, what I stated so that we have this on the record multiple times. The issues of the house, the adjacent house to them is not the basis for this variance. So I discussions, understand. discussions, I, I okay. Understand. Discussions of that aren't relevant. That aside, at this particular point, that house is in litigation as a result of its construction. It was constructed in the incorrect location. As a result, it's in litigation. Until that litigation is settled, there will not be a removal of that house or a completion of that house until that's settled. As a result, that will remain as is because the city at, right at this point is not part of that, those, those negotiations in the litigation. Thank you. Okay, I understand you have a possible witness. If you'd like to take the oath, please, from mm -hmm. the attorney and then Stand testify. and raise your right hand. Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Please go to the podium and state your name and address over there, if you would. <coughs> Excuse me. Chairman, can I just make a comment at this point? Since safety is not part of the criteria, why are we going to listen to her testimony? This case obviously has not met the review criteria of sections 215.02b and 215.02.5 of the L LDC. Those are the criteria we need to be jud judging this case on, not on uh, items that the attorney has said and our um, planner has said we cannot consider. I, I could speak to that. We just do have to give the applicant the, the opportunity to present all the evidence that the applicant feels is necessary for you to make a decision. It's up to the board to determine whether that evidence is relevant, competent, and substantial. So we do have to give the opportunity for the applicant to present whatever evidence that she has to present. All right, thank you. Thank you. Well said. Yes, ma'am. Oh. I hope I'm bringing Can you this. Please identify yourself and your address. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Valerie Warner. I'm at 1410 Meyer Lane. And um, I can testify to what's going on with this house. Um, the neighbor, who is supposed to be my new neighbor, and I have been fighting this since before um, it started construction. And we were told I tried to file a complaint with code enforcement because I know that they were building in. The alleyway, I have, they were claiming that our property is in there. And I'm, I was told it was a civil matter, but I'm under the impression that this might be a result of fraud based on um, Beach's survey um, because they are claiming on their survey that they found an X mark and they're using that as a way to document their boundary. And there is no X mark on my driveway. I've had three um, surveyors come out, the three that did ours and two new ones we had to pay for ourselves. But I also have on video what I think is one of Beach's workers trying to make an X mark in my driveway. And he, in this video, he admits that they cannot even find it. And he's in, the, he's in this video with a very sharp pointy stick. And I ran down there because I saw them doing this. And I don't okay. know if- 
We're not too concerned with the problem with the surveys. Okay, because we even were, there's some debate whether we should be considering any safety issues in the house. But oh. I'm going to let you to testify if you hear of any. Do you know of any safety issues? People staying in the vacant house, for example, or anything. Yes, like that? I've I've heard people talking in there at night. I'm afraid to go out of my driveway. I'm afraid because it's so close to my house. I am afraid that there are people in there and creatures in there. And we've had teenagers in there tearing stuff up. I've called the police several times. And there's people almost every other day driving up strangers in trucks, strangers and you know, construction workers, investors, and all kinds of people just wandering around on there. And I got tired of calling the police because I was basically just becoming a pain to them. And I found it funny today that I went to try and find the records of every time I called, and they could not find any. Maybe, I don't know if it's because there's no address that they marked it to, but it's, 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 a, it's a mess in there. It's flooded. I have, I have videotape from uh, Memorial Day, I think it was last year, or Veterans Day, when we had all that rain. There was like, there was like water, like this high through the whole place. Everything was soaked for days. And it's got to be a mosquito pit, if not a snake pit. Uh, if we're talking I, about safety, which yeah. refers to people that staying there. Any questions from the board? Any comments, questions of this witness? All right, I'll let, with Heather, I understand your concern, but I, I'd like to pursue this if I can. You mentioned p some people staying there, vandals. Is that mostly in the nighttime or what? It's all, it's, it's all the time during the day. Like I said, people are driving up in the morning. People are walking up. Driving is not a safety problem. Oh, they're getting driving. out of their car. And do you, what, have you had any threats to your personal safety, for example? I know that I've smelled marijuana coming from out of there or something. Okay, unfortunately, that's a, that's a problem we all have to deal with, and it's regardless of where you live. But um, yes, there there have been kids in there <coughs> tearing stuff up and throwing debris around. We have debris coming off of the roof, coming into our yard. We have all kinds of. Um, I think there's animals breeding in there, honestly, too. Well, again, animals is not snakes. a safety problem. You say there's kids. Yes. Staying there at night. Um. There's been I had some out there in the daytime. I don't know where they're, and they were throwing, tearing things out of the um i don't know drywall or whatever and that's not a safety problem from my perspective i'm just worried if the had you yourself had any safety issues people staying there at night for example threatening you doing anything like that i've not i've not gone out there at night because i'm afraid to i'm afraid to even though i hear something going on um, I know that things were stolen out of there because I, I heard some commotion going on, and the next day the, one of the builders told me that a bunch of copper was stolen. So I know there are people in there in the evening, okay. but I'm afraid to go and in, investigate. Thank you for your testimony. I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, is this the house you're talking about across? That's okay. That's okay. My question is this. You can go this? back to the You can go back. Okay. You mentioned that the house floods with a couple of feet of water. Yes, and you I, I mosquitoes have... and all that. Mm -hmm. If you notice the slope on this house going to the drainage. It's not, it's not doing. Down, it's a down slope. It's not going out. It's, it's, I have video of it. I have video of it with all this wet material just festering in there. Do you have a picture? Okay. I don't have that with me, but I can get it. I can find it and bring it back if you need me to. For, for doing this. Okay, Mr. Hrabowski. Okay. Do you know whose white truck that is in the front yard of that house? Can I come Please. Up? Mine didn't come with a white truck. Oh, no, there's a color photo. There's a color photo, too. Later on. Thank you. I'm afraid so I am afraid for my own safety to even be alone out there because there could be people just behind that wall. Okay. 
Any further comments or questions of this witness? Okay. Seeing none, then the next item. Well, I would say, does the applicant have any additional yes. testimony you'd like to give? Mrs. Connect, do you have any questions you can ask this witness or any further comments you might want to add that hasn't been addressed previously tonight? If you can go to the podium, please. Yeah, the uh, only thing I, I want you to uh, consider is that the opinion of the people who are living nearby and they all signed the petition with no problems that uh, they would like this fence to be six feet. All people who like nine houses on our street, basically uh, we are the one who are living in this condition and everyone understands it. and. <laughs> uh, instead of the even safety concern, they think that it will make our uh, street more beautiful and uh, basically um, uh, enhance the aesthetics view. Uh, all other uh, evidence, if you read my letter of hardship, then it's like I'm not going to uh, restate it again. Is basically everything is in my letter of hardship. Thank you. Is that all? Yeah. Any further comments or questions of this witness from the board? I have a question. Mr. Eisner? <clears throat> I have one question for you. Has anybody ever, uh, if you'd like, sure. Has, has there ever been any danger in your particular house where somebody Brew something at your house if they, you know, caught, mugged you or any type of anything that you can tell me. Because you, your, your explanation keeps being the safety, but I don't know of any crime that has happened other than you telling us that there's an abandoned house across the street, which we all know, and that once in a while. Some kids will go out and smoke pot there. Um, I understand, but these kids have never damaged your car, damaged your window. They've never thrown something at you or accosted your child or anybody's child. Am I correct? Yes, but this board is not listening to a case about trespassing, unfortunately. We're listening to a case regarding the difference between a four-foot fence or a six-foot fence. So, mm -hmm. and your your claim to us is where, where I have to make a decision, um, and I'm sure the rest of the board has to make a decision on the difference between a, what a four-foot fence would give you aesthetically mm -hmm. and security-wise versus what a six-foot fence would give you aesthetically and safety safety-wise, and. For me, I don't feel that I've seen the difference of the two feet, what it's going to do for you. The aesthetics, I think you have a beautiful situation with a four-foot fence. Um, to make it a six-foot fence, when the slope is there, um, you're going to be looking at, from the street, almost an eight-foot fence. Uh, if your idea is to try to build this uh, wall that you don't see the structure on the other side, you'd need a 10 or 15 foot fence. And so I don't, I don't really understand why the need for this is. Uh, yes, I understand you. And uh, first of all, uh, I want to say that uh, uh, every person who lives uh, in the proximity of this abandoned construction, we try our best not to provoke the dangerous situation. So like Val said, uh, she is not getting out of the house at night. I am not getting out of the house. So it's, uh, we are not f like provoking uh, the situation when we can uh, challenge those people or, or, or challenge our safety, which is already uh, not the perfect situation, basically. So uh, my goal to come to you is to prevent uh, the future danger. 
uh, and uh, to make uh, my life and life of my family uh, more safe than it currently is. But if you don't allow me to do this, I'm not going to provoke any danger. I'm not going out of my house at night and uh, try to find those people and uh, basically provoke them to damage me or my property. Uh, second. I'm not asking you to provoke anybody. I'm just asking you if anybody has done anything to your car, to your house, to your child, to you, to a neighbor. Has there ever been a police report that the, the kids did something to, did they break a window? Uh, to my property, no, no. Did they break your window? Again, forgive me, even if they did throw trash, we're trying to determine here yeah, mm -hmm. whether it's a four foot or six foot fence. Uh, uh, and also, uh, I, I came to you uh, with the second application uh, just because I believe that I do have the same right as all people uh, in Tarpon Springs who have the flat front yard and they have four feet fence on the, on the flat surface. Um, I think uh, I should have the same right to have four feet fence on the flat surface and if you consider the slope difference uh, exactly what I need is to add uh, two feet to have basically the same fence as uh, many people have on the flat front yard. Let me ask you a couple more questions. I'm sorry to belabor this. But we, this came up before. You have no security lights or motion sensors on your house, correct? Correct. Yeah. All right, that's all I have. Um, I have a final question. Yes, sir. On the picture that I showed you earlier with the fence parallel um, to Keystone Road, mm -hmm. on the other side of the house, you have a white prefabricated fence. They're both six feet, correct? Yeah, those are six feet. It, it would be nice if you connect them all around with six foot fence. Would that make sense? Well, I, uh, I will connect it, yes, with the six feet. Uh, if you allow me to do the six feet, it will be connected to this. That's why aesthetically it would look better for you to have six feet all around the house, correct? Well, I never thought about this, but it, it will be connected uh, on the same height, right? But there's one problem. The slope, you can take care of. Uh, the other, slope the goes other down anyway. That the city has an ordinance for four feet in the front. Doesn't matter what you have on the side, in the back, and what's constructed on the keystone side. So that's the problem that we're trying to solve here. And we're going every which way possible. Mm -hmm. And we can't put our finger why you have to go six foot fence. Anybody can throw garbage over it. And anybody can scale that. By the way, you have these pylons here. What kind of a fence you're gonna put in between these structures here that you have? Ah, this will be uh, um, uh, aluminum rails. That's so, the last question that I have. Thank you. So, so but uh, my last question, what I, uh, I want to point out is that uh, uh, the uh, code uh, permission is for the four feet front yard fence, but it doesn't specify if the property has a slope or something. Uh, it is assumed that the surface is flat and everyone can put a, a four feet fence in front of the house or on the same level with the house. However, if you consider the slope, I think the, the topographical issue makes a difference and oh, why should I be suffering from the topographical slope when all people have the flat front yard and four feet fence and if I would have the flat front yard, I would just go with the four feet fence. You do realize the slope is in your favor? No, I don't. <laughs> really. You don't realize that? No. I, I, I would rather have the flat surface and have no problems with all the variances. So you're seeing it from inside your house out? So yes, you feel, yes, of course. Right. But from the street, mm -hmm. when you're driving down the street, your fence starts a foot and a half, 18 inches or two feet above the flat. So you have from a car a six foot fence. Do you follow that? Uh, yes, I follow this, but 
uh, if you come to the house and you look for, from the house side, you, you, you just don't but even your, see the fence. Your spells. claim is not that it's, it's already safe in your house. Your claim is that you want to be safe from strangers on the street. So to be safe from sa strangers on the street, you now have a six-foot fence from the street. We're not concerned about what it looks like because your house could be built if you stood on your roof. Your house, you could be looking down. A 15-foot fence isn't going to help you. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, I'm seeing what you're saying, yes. So your slope that you're looking at is from your house. The slope we're discussing is from the street. <laughs> And you would have a six-foot fence in front of your house just because it's sloped up. Well, but how you consider the entire front yard then? If the uh, fence doesn't even reach the windows and basically if we go by the code we, which doesn't specify uh, the, the slope, so if people put the fence, it's... Uh, Would you be able to explain to me why you need to have the fence at the window height? What does that have to do with security? Uh, uh, what I was told, uh, the security is not an issue. It cannot be considered. Okay. So we're discussing then what? Aesthetics? Are we discussing the uh, variation of the code or of the city code? But the code and is four feet. Yes, but it doesn't specify if it has a slope. It's assumed it's uh, on a flat surface with all the houses. But I'm presenting you the uh, topographical uh, variation of this particular property. So if we're discussing it for the slope. Uh, uh, if you want to consider the safety issue and the fence height, then I will tell you if people want, uh, they can go on my, um, on my driveway on the left side of the house and um, uh, basically come to the walking gate, uh, which is four feet. And it's, uh, they do not have to pass the fence from the slope. They can basically go around uh, from the driveway, and this is uh, a flat surface. That was my original statement to you on the last time we spoke. That's exactly what I said to you. It didn't matter what height you put something at, a fence uh, height. Mm -hmm. On the left side, they could be hiding there for that matter. So. I, I just don't understand, as far as a, a security, it's not going to give you any more security. As far as aesthetics, the only aesthetics you seem to be looking for is the aesthetics out of the window of your house. Uh, well, uh, the variance... Understand what I'm asking, what I'm telling you? Do you understand what I'm, what I'm saying? I understand, of course, but uh, if you put the fence on your front yard, you probably have to consider it from both sides, right? No, we consider it only from the, the driver's side, from, not from the house, from the street side. Your house could be built on a hill and be, you could have a staircase 15 feet up. It could be a stilt house. And if your windows are 20 feet high, how high should we approve a fence so that you don't see out that window? Well, now that you brought that, I do have a question. All right, Mr. That. Hrabowski, <coughs> Mike, you finished with There is one property that I walked by the other day uh, along the bayou that has clearly higher than it. Okay, I'm going to just stop this here. Does that have anything to do with this application? Yes, it does. Okay. Just the fact that they somehow found a way to build a higher fence, and their gate is also taller than five. Uh, well, it's at least five foot because I'm over six foot tall. The fence comes to here. Now, is it because they put a seawall? Would they consider that a seawall, or did they somehow elevate like 
Mr. Boris was saying elevate the land because that does in fact exist. It's possible they installed it without a permit. We have a lot of situations in Tarpon where that exists and right, they did so without permits. Prior to the okay. Well that's so I was just trying to find another solution. The other, of course. Yeah, and basically I tried to find the same thing. I, I went all the ways and uh, I talked to the people of what to do with this. Uh, I was trying uh, to make um, uh, the surface from the house as flat as possible and I need to preserve this uh, water drainage too. Right, this and so you have to consider the drainage, right. but it's still a possibility to do what Mr. Burroughs said, to raise the land. I believe that's And they possible. did. Another possibility is that all of your neighbors could agree to do a gated community. That solves the problem. Nobody comes in, nobody gets in that house. The whole community gets gated. So you'd have to go and get whatever that process is. It's probably going to raise your taxes, but if you can afford it, that that's another solution. But I think you can already kind of get a sense of where this is going otherwise, so. Uh, and basically my front yard was filled already with uh, two loads of dirt to elevate it uh, as much as they can. And um, the, the pictures were made after this, so it's basically what the landscapers already did to the best of the uh, topography of the area. Any further comments or questions for this witness? Comments from staff? Are we ready for a motion? Uh, before the motion, I would just say, um, because of the application, how many times she's been before the board, that I just wanted to remind everyone on the board that there are certain criteria that are only to be considered for this specific variance application. I know you all know that, but just to reiterate, um, and those are the criteria that are listed in the staff report, and those are the criteria in your code. Um, again, there's only to be considered competent, substantial, and relevant evidence, and that's up to your determination. I would say um, the information that Chairman Elliott presented with regards to the site visit, that a little bit is presenting his own evidence. I would ask you not to consider that when you're making your determination. Um, everything else that both the, the applicant and her witness um, put forth you need to determine whether that's competent, substantial, or relevant, and whether that meets the criteria set forth in your code. And now that I've said my piece. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion, please. <laughs> I move to deny application 16-26 for 1401 Meyer Lane. I second that. Okay, there's been a motion and a second discussion on the motion. I might say a few things. Um, well, I certainly appreciate the applicant's tenacity. It's her property. It's a beautiful piece of property. She's tried hard to get this approved. This is her fourth month. Uh, the neighbors don't object, which is maybe a factor, maybe not. But I'd, I'd like to consider that, although there's some question whether it's a valid criteria and the effect on the neighborhood. Um, it's uh, apparently evident that the applicant can raise the land at least where the f wall would be located a foot or two and get a five or six foot elevation based upon the grade level at that particular location. Um, there's been no evidence of any danger that I've seen tonight, uh, just the usual common problems that the world is getting more dangerous. I can, we can all recognize that. It's sad to say, but much of the world does live behind walled communities, walled houses. Uh, in the city of Tarpon Springs, however, our elected officials has determined we're not going to live that way. If you live in a subdivision that's not gated, then you're only allowed to get a four-foot fence in the front of your house. Uh, and there was a time when people built moats around their castles. You know, we don't have that situation. We're getting there maybe, but we're not there yet, and we'd like to think that that's not going to happen for a long time. Uh, she's not put any of her security lights. People who have this kind of problem do have security lights or motion sensors or they have other ways of protecting themselves. 
of, from harm. And it certainly comes to all of us, myself included. And uh, we deal with it as best we can. But and I, that's the so I don't foresee a problem. Then we're talking about the solution to that problem. This solution is not a solution to that problem. What she's proposing to do is not going to, in my mind, eliminate that problem because for the driveway is going to be there. It's going to be open if someone wants to come into her curtilage, her front yard or side yard, they can just walk through the driveway. And uh, perhaps it might be better for her safety to have a four-foot fence rather than a six-foot fence. Because then once you're behind a six-foot fence, it's easier to be hidden. For that reason, they don't want to have people with bushes too high around their windows because you can have people lurking in the bushes. And uh, that's just some thoughts I apologize for for going a little bit too far astray on the evidence but I thought it'd be appropriate to listen to what they had to say and whether it's uh, relevant or not as uh, our attorney has advised us so mr. chairman yes sir can I make a comment sure, of course it was mentioned before that the police department showed up and there's no records I live in this city since 1981 we have an excellent police department I don't think that this police department will have no records if there was such activity across the house, the house that's abandoned from your house. I just want to make that stipulation. Thank you. Any further comments on the motion? Any further, if you're willing to consider adding anything else to what we've said? The, the hearing has been closed, however, we've gone this far if you have anything else. Okay, we'll close the hearing. All right, let's have a roll call, please. Ms. Kim. Sanner. <clears throat> to deny, yes. Michael, Mr. Eisner. Yes. Mr. Burris. Yes. Mr. Robowski. Yes. Mr. Elliott. Yes. Okay, opinion of the chair, the motion has been passed. And uh, you know what you can do then. Thank you, Ms. Connick. There are certain options you do have tonight. Okay. Staff comments. Staff has no comments at this time. <coughs> okay, board comments. Can we first recognize our new alternate? Laurel, could you please introduce yourself, if you don't mind? Sure. Sure, I'm Laurel Whitney. Um, I lived in Tarpon a little over 17 years, which makes me a relative newcomer here. I realize that. Um, previously, I worked for the Pinellas County Tax Collector for nearly 39 years. I retired last year. My last role was administering real estate and personal property tax collection for all of Pinellas County. Um, part of my duties also included sitting on and sharing various boards, committees, coalitions, and user groups. So I'm hoping that the experience I have will be a benefit to you. I do look forward to learning from you all, and thank you for the welcome. And thank you for okay. offering your, your uh, talents and abilities. Appreciate that and welcome you to the board. And we need alternates because there's, you know, the world requires us to be elsewhere sometimes. And uh, I managed to get here tonight, even though I had an operation last week. I'm somewhat inco incoherent as usual, but that's not unusual. Uh, <laughs> our next meeting is May 25th, I believe. Can we all be present for that? No one going out of town. And uh, I've written a letter to the city commission. I've been, we've been advised that I can't discuss the letter before the board, or maybe we can, I don't know. But I've written the letter. We've discussed it briefly until we were told we couldn't. And it's going before the city commission in the next few weeks. I'd hope that you all would be there and give your own comments. Again, my thoughts are just mine as to what we've talked about as far as our substantive and procedural issues with our rules and with the ordinance. Uh, anything else? The board? Okay, and the meeting is adjourned at 8.20. Thank you. <laughs>
They were approved right. by the board. It's so. obviously uh, yeah. Well, there okay. it is then. Thank you. We can't give legal advice. Yeah.